What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Nuggets of Truth. As Christians, we go to church on Sunday, but there's some who don't believe that this is right because we aren't keeping the Sabbath day by doing this. Now this begs the question, what exactly does it mean to keep the Sabbath day? Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 through 11 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. All right, first and foremost, I want you to understand that this command comes from the law of Moses, which we are no longer under. As Paul lets us know in Romans chapter 6, verse 15, what then, are we to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20 through 21, to the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. Now, some will say that that's the law that they're talking about. This is the Ten Commandments. Therefore, we're not under the law, but we're still under the Ten Commandments. Well, here's the thing. The Ten Commandments aren't separate from the law. They're the beginning of the law. James clarifies this for us as he explains that we should stop clinging to the law and cling to the law of liberty. James chapter 2, verse 8 through 13. If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. The Ten Commandments and all the laws Moses was given by God, Moses wrote down and recorded in the book of the law, according to Deuteronomy chapter 31 verses 23 through 29. Now Paul has to constantly explain this in his letters to the different churches. Romans chapter 10 verse 1 through 13 says, Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved, for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The law of Moses is based on works alone. This cannot save us. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 through 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. If we say we are still under the Ten Commandments, then we say we are no longer under a law of faith. 
thus trying to save ourselves through our own goodness when only God can save us and redeem us from our sin. Therefore, we aren't under the law of Moses anymore, which includes the Ten Commandments, because we can't be saved under the law of Moses. This was the entire purpose of Jesus' coming so that we might be rescued from under the law of Moses, Galatians chapter 3, verse 10 through 29, and Hebrews chapter 9. We are now under the law of Christ. Now, I want you to notice how God introduces the fourth commandment, Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We are to keep the Sabbath day holy by remembering it. But remembering what? That on the seventh day, God rested from all of creation. This was God foreshadowing the final day of rest for all of his people before eternity. The millennial reign of Christ that John saw in Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 through 6, which we went into detail explaining in our video, The Creation Story, part 1, How Old is the Earth?, which is under our Too Deep category. Whether or not we should worship on the Sabbath or worship on Sunday or a different day isn't a unique problem to our society. Paul dealt with the same thing as well. Romans chapter 14, verse 1 through 9 says, As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Paul tells us not to quarrel over opinions. Then he uses the food that we eat and the day we worship on as the two examples. So no, worshiping on Sunday isn't pagan. Think about it. Jesus rose on a Sunday. The Holy Spirit was given on a Sunday. Peter preached the first message on a Sunday. Heaven was created on a Sunday because on Saturday would have been the Sabbath. Okay, whatever. Worshipping on Sunday isn't the mark of the beast either. First, it doesn't even make sense. The mark of the beast is a mark. It's about to go down. Not an action you don't like because the person you follow had a demonic encounter as they foamed at the mouth and saw a false Christ contradicting the actual Christ as they said that the most important commandment is to keep the Sabbath day holy. Jesus directly stated that the most important commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. In fact, he even went farther and gave us the second most important command, which is love your neighbor as yourself. Loving God and loving your neighbor is the most important commands. Those are the two. Sabbath day isn't even part of the conversation. Anyways. Second, the mark of the beast isn't on the earth yet. It won't be on the earth until the great tribulation. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 through 18. Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. It exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence, and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose mortal wound was healed. It performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people. And by the signs that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived, and it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. Also it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Without the mark, you can't buy or sell. 
Regardless of when you worship, you can buy and you can sell. This is the importance of reading the scriptures for yourselves and not relying on other people's visions, dreams, or feelings as Paul explains to us in Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 through 23. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you, insisting on aestheticism and worship of angels, going on in detail about visions, puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with a growth that is from God. If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, referring to the things that all perish as they are used. According to human precepts and teachings, these have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and aestheticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. While you guys ponder all of these things, let me sum everything up real quick. We are no longer under the law of Moses. We are now under the law of Christ. We are to follow his commands, not be a slave to the legalism of the law of Moses that we can't keep because of our flesh. Therefore, going to church and worshiping on Sunday isn't a sin. It isn't the mark of the beast. It isn't pagan. As Paul stated, each person must keep the day that their conscience holds them to and not condemn someone else for their own convictions or lack thereof. And I also want to make it clear that I'm not against the Ten Commandments. I grew up learning them. My children will grow up learning them. I believe they're a good standard for how to live our lives, but I'm not going to put them above Christ. In other words, in other words, I'm going to follow what Christ said to do because he sets the perfect standard for how we should live our lives. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.